Hey guys, Tarot here, bring you a 1v1 today. We are on Langraskaya, playing for you today, spawning in the north. We have 9C MCA Max 1336. I call Max from here on out, playing as Ostia, and who's straight away locked in Ostrupin. Max is about rank 65, I think it was, as Ostia, so a pretty highly ranked player. In the south, we have STC Makos. Playing as Soviet Union and his loadout is Reserve Army, Shock Army, and Guard Motor. And uh, he is about rank 90 as Soviets. So, reasonably close match up here. About as close as you'd expect to get. Should be a good one. We're on Langrisky, of course, so games can draw out quite, quite a long time in terms of... Uh, I suppose you could go for an email. 20 i mean this is one of the only maps where you can kind of make those this kind of things viable but probably not a good idea against austrian of course with the railway artillery would make a very short work of it but it is po it is possible if your opponent doesn't have an off map uh, artillery strike in their commander so i mean uh, of course the safest option would be guards guards pretty good on this map with the uh, lmg upgrade but we'll have to see how he gets on. He's got two email 20 commanders, so... Probably a fan of that email 20. And I do enjoy building him myself. Just a uh, very expensive 600 manpower. To be countered by many, many commanders which have a... Off map, it's just never really works out, if I'm honest. Okay, so Max managed to snake this garrison. He's going to get a machine gun in there. That is a big misplay by Makos. You don't want to let your opponent get a machine gun into here. Looks like he's playing very defensively for a Soviet. Putting down sandbags on his cutoff. Generally do not advise putting sandbags on your cutoff. Even, even outside the capping circle like this. Your opponent can't cap and... Uh, You can because if he if he neutralizes this, then he can just like get onto the other side of the sandbags, and it's very hard to push out of your base. So yeah, I think it's just too risky to try to put sandbags down on your cutoff. Same applies to there. Don't try and put sandbags over here. They usually end up backfiring on you. So we get some uh, cutoff play here by Makos, and he's bringing in some conscripts here for support. So a nice play, both getting aggressive on each other's territory. We've got three squads of Ostrup in here, heavily outnumbering uh, Makos' forces, so all he's really doing is stalling here. Ostrup has kind of fallen out of the meta these days, it was never popular against Soviets, but it seems like the uh, since the veterancy changes came in, like it actually started <laughs> working, Seems to have uh, fallen out of the middle. Oh, nice timing there. He got into the point before it got neutralized. Ends up winning the engagement thanks to his flamethrower. That is nice to see. We've got a mortar coming out now from Makos, and he's going to start putting down some indirect fire onto that garrison because. He just can't afford to have this machine gun sitting in his garrison the entire game. At the same time, though, he's trying to avoid running head-on into this. He's actually sending squads out trying to harass down this flank, and it's not very well defended, so... Nice play by Makos. Lost control of his cutoff here. So he finally managed to unseek that machine gun. Which is actually going to come forwards a little bit further. At the same time, this fuel is getting neutralized. So, and they've uh, both been doing a bit of damage to each other's resources. And this is actually a very fast 2 2 2 coming out from Max. It does happen when you play as Ostia with the uh, Ostrupin. 
allows you a lot more map control in the early games, really speeds up your taking times. So it's going to be a yeah, very fast 2 2 2. Usually, I don't really like going 2 2 2s against Soviets that much, but it has been quite popular to go 2 2 2 2s, which seem to deal quite well with the T70 now that they've got their health buff. That's kind of how it goes these days. If you're going for the 222, get two of them. We'll have to see what Max decides to do. Looks like he's putting down a medic bunker in his base. He's well equipped. Uh, he's got two pioneer squads, one sweeper, one flamer. Still got enough munitions for that medic upgrade. That is the benefit of not needing LMGs. Plenty of munitions for absolutely everything else. Also a good idea to try and spam S mines. It would be a very good idea to try and put some S mines down on his fuel point. Try and stop harassment of that. Okay, so we have reserve army selectors by Makos. Maybe he's hoping to get some of these AT partisans against 222, but he's kind of got to bait it forward. So has he, got, he does have AT grenades. Bad idea to Ura in from so far away. Kind of a bit of a giveaway to your opponent that you do have AT grenades. I kind of want to surprise him with it. Maybe Uraing from a shorter distance where he has less time to react and backpedal. But yeah, Uraing from uh, far away, he's going to hear that Ura and he's going to have a lot of time to react. So that was a bit of a misplay there. But yeah, it's a very good idea to get AT grenades because in conjunction with these AT partisans, they come with AT grenades. If you have them upgraded from your base, so they can just put a molly whopping onto the 222 if it goes anywhere near a building. You pop out those AT partisans, Shrek, AT grenade Shrek, and it's dead. Oh wow, who's going to win this engagement though? Pioneers do do better in close range. Oh, they're both dropping similar amounts of models. Both very spread out, so Flamethrower is only doing damage to one or two models. So like Combat Engineer is actually targeting two models there. That's why they start to pull ahead. Still very close. He's got to pay attention. I think he's busy over here. Oh, and that's why he's actually losing his 2 2 to that streak. As I was saying, as soon as they go near to that garrison, we saw it time and time again from Von Ivan. So deadly. He went for Parsons. Marcos going, or Makos going for Reserve Army. Benefits of this one, of course, ra rapid conscription. This, uh, I mean, I used to have a bit of fun with it when the veterancy wasn't working because, you know, unvetted conscripts, same as vetted conscripts, so it didn't really matter. It's actually very effective for that week or so. <laughs> Where veterancy wasn't working, but now that it is unvetted conscripts coming into the battlefield, not uh, not quite as valuable as they used to be. But uh, other benefits of this, of course, PPSH cons are quite strong. He's equipped a few of them. Not the best on Langris Sky, of course. A lot of long-range engagements, very open map, can be hard to close the distance, but they will bully. Those Ostrupen now with those PPSHs is equipped. They can just Ura into Ostrupen and then rip them into shreds. Seeing some P greens coming up from Max. And he does have two P green accuracy bulletins, so this is clearly part of his strategy. Ostrupen with P green support. And they will uh, match up a lot better against those PPSH cons. Take a look at VPs, see Makos actually off to a rough start already. For Langriskaya, that is like a chasm of victory points. 
can be notoriously hard to knock VPs off the clock in Langra Sky. So if you've got a 100, 100 VP lead at this stage of the game, you're doing pretty well. Especially as Ostia. What is this gun added to the mix from Makos? I don't think that, that was really uh, necessary. The enemy has cut off a sector. After he knocked out the 2 2 2 with the Shrek, that Shrek probably would have uh, served him. Probably should have invested his manpower into teching up instead. Oh, this could be a dead con squad. In fact, I'm 90% sure it is. Yep, there it goes. P Green's on the retreat path. Cause dead conscripts, that is no good. But yeah, he should have teched up right now. Would have had enough fuel for a T70. And uh, when you're playing a doctrine with no coolant tanks, very, very important to have an extremely potent tier 3 as Soviets. So by uh, not teching right now, he's really hurting his chances. Especially on a map like Langrisky, where games tend to draw out. Like this is a bit of a misplay here by Makos, not going for that fast. T70, there we go, double PPSH is too strong for the Key Greens. He's trying to position his MG42 to shut this push down. Doesn't have Molotovs yet, I'm kind of surprised. If you are going to be spamming PPCH cons, you do want to have those Molotovs available. Man, continuous harassment here. Should be popping down S mines every time he does this play. Makes it very, very hard for your opponent to come and uh, recapture that fuel. I was saying, man, PPSH cons just bullying those off trooper now. Ooh, we've got a telemine down here. Don't have a uh, minesweeper yet. And yeah, now he's ticking, but you can see 135 fuel. I mean, I know you probably hear me talk about this time and time again, every time, but it is so important to have your fuel timed out correctly. So you have. You know, as, as soon as your tech completes, or, or near enough, you can build your light vehicle. It's just so crucial with your light vehicle timing. I mean, he could have had this out three minutes ago. Three or four minutes ago, really. So yeah, that is, uh, that is just an eternity in terms of light vehicles. It goes from being a good time to so-so. And uh, Max himself, probably, yeah, he's ticked up. Could be putting down his tech structure, wouldn't be too far away from a Panzer IV. PSH cons, in fact, he's activated rapid conscription right there. And as soon as he saw that, he started to beat a retreat. Here comes the T70. In fact, he's going for another machine gun. I think that's a pretty good idea. Facing up against a lot of conscripts like this. Two Two overlapping machine guns. A lot more effective at shutting down those URAP charges in. Now TC needs to look for opportunities. There's one over here. Try and get away from this pack. If he doesn't swept that teller, that could easily knock out this TC. In fact, he's going for two TC minis. So he's going for a very Von Ivan esque build. Spamming T-70s. Here we go, nice rotation there, pre-empting Makos' attack on these P-Greens, perhaps realising that they were a bit exposed on this flank. So it's going to come down to how he uses these T-70s right now. Could uh, very well decide the game if he can shred them this army if he flanks the pack, clears that out, he could uh, easily rip into what what remains. And here we go, he gets one crucial retreat there. I think he's gonna take one shot, no. Here he goes. Oh 
Pax exposed. Pax is going to go down here. Is it going to, it gets one shot off before it goes down. There it goes. Now it's dead. So we've got to worry about those two fouls. Oh, he loses one squad of conscripts, but it gets replaced thanks to rapid description. Like, there we go. He's got two free squads. And now the pack has been recruited by the Austrian. They are very handy for recruiting team weapons. So, yeah, I think things could have gone a bit better there for Makos. I mean, he did lose a PPS8 squad for no real reason, and it is a shame to lose the veterancy. I feel like if he had uh, Molotovs during the engagement, things could have gone a little bit better. Forcing your opponent to uh, run around and dodge those Molotovs very handy in those hectic engagements. Now he's investing into two machine guns of his own. Very important to have machine guns supporting your conscripts. Especially PP6 conscripts don't have much long range damage and here we go TC only about to go down here oh yeah he's gonna run over that mine well I mean he's probably gonna die anyway at least he stripped that tail of mine with it <laughs> he's this guns moving up finally I mean he built this what probably nine minutes ago now it's coming coming good so it's been sitting around you know taxing his manpower for nine minutes doing nothing so a slight misplay there by building his discuss so early, especially, I mean if he hadn't had AT Partisans, would have needed that assist to counter the 222, but that was not the case. Okay, he's popped rapid description once again. So it's going to be interesting, is he going to go for tier 4 play? Tier 4 is very viable on this map. Well, the SU-85 does quite well on these, uh, you know, with its focus sight mode, and Katusha has enough time to rack up a nasty kill count. This could be a dead pioneer here. T-70 try to chase it down. No. Doesn't want to risk chasing any further. And this is a very telemine friendly area, doesn't want to risk it. Okay, so we've got two Maxims now. Maxims actually synergize pretty well with Rapid Conscription because they're very cheap to reinforce. So if you lose a couple models from it, you know, it can help to help uh, help your conscript count. Very economical. Oh, I think he's going to lose this though. Late retreat. There you go. Incendiary rounds just ripping in. It's going to be three machine guns now for MCA Max. That is going to be very hard for these conscripts to operate with that many machine guns. T Series I mean, just really been ineffective. He's. I think he's having trouble trying to micro all his squads and the T70 at the same time. One's coming in trying to flank that machine gun. Forced to pack up, but doesn't get much else done. Here comes the T70 now. Oh, he loses another squad there. I think he's trying to trying to do too much all at once, trying to micro on too many fronts. Ends up losing another squad. You know, he could rep conscription, he keeps replenishing those conscripts. Doesn't make the losses quite so costly, but still he's starting to fall behind here. And it can be uh, very expensive to upkeep this many squads. This is probably where he needs to try tech up and get a Katusha out. Okay, he's coming in. 
Too many focusing on the MG. Pop rapid conscription once again. He's really loving that rapid conscription. A Shrek squad pop from here, trying to find that Osprey. That's too far away. Next is going down. Okay, here we go. We're gonna try to chase it down. Osprey could be in trouble here. Railway artillery coming down. Looks like it cleared out a Maxim. Osman, oh no, he's, he's juking around. What's coming on? Where is that other squad? Okay, it's over here still. He needs to try and join his comrade. Down goes that Ostrogan squad in the building. We have more conscripts at our disposal. Oh, why did he retreat? They're just about to shoot the Shrek, and then he could have retreated. And he's still a bit late with this partisan, and he needed probably another AT grenade. I think this Osman's going to get away. Here comes the T70 for support. Pack is now though back in the picture. Oh man, if this Osman gets away, that's heartbreaking. No, nope, Pack misses its first shot, now refaces. T Series gonna disengage. Yeah, that should have been dead Oswin there. Of course, uh, you know, being a bit he got stalled here with the second squad of AT partisans. That wasn't the case. Two Shreks, and that would have been a dead Ostwind. Two more Shreks would have killed it for sure there, and uh, that was very achievable. Still, he has gained a lot of territory during all this, but at the same time, he's taken a lot of losses. He's starting to fall behind in tech, and in the uh, armor race, he's also still got a bit of munitions though, thanks to uh, holding double munitions for quite a while, so he can still keep pumping the rapid conscription going. And usually, this would stop working so well because by now there'd be a whole bunch of LMG Vet 3 Grenadiers and they'd just be ripping through the conscripts. But as I was saying, Ostrupin don't scale as well into the late game, so that's why this is still working here. Oh, it's going to be a dead Maxim. Yep, there we go. Hands of four now on the field. In fact, he's, he had two Maxims. In fact, I mean, he, yeah, he lost all his Maxims. So, <laughs> that guy's is not doing too well with his machine gun preservation. We are losing supplies. He's lose control of his fuel as well. And he did lose one of those AT partisan squads. So man, he's you know he's playing a bit fast and loose with all of his stuff here. And now uh, Max is just grinding, grinding it out. I mean the VP situation pretty much even, but he's playing for the long game. Whereas Macos seems to be a bit more suicidal. Has put down his tech though, so let's have the option. S85 would be pretty good against these two tanks. So at a Katusha, I guess, I mean, he's got four machine guns in a pack. It's going to have no shortage of tugs for a Katusha. Either one would be a very good idea. And once you get to an army this size, any uh, surplus squads you get from rapid conscription, you may want to consider just merging them in other squads otherwise the uh, manpower tax can just be too great having this many squads can't afford to reinforce them which is what you're starting to see happen here as he tries to actually get a vehicle out It'd be too much to maintain so try and merge the low vet squads into the high vet squads and just use it as like uh, free manpower Yeah, he's not trading very well here at all. He's just bleeding like crazy from all these squads. Looks like his, his this gun's going to get flanked here, and he doesn't have any squads nearby for support. They're all back in base, but he couldn't afford to reinforce them. The enemy has silenced one of our anti-tank guns. He's going to try kill this now. Uh, Ura and try and steal it before it gets killed. No, he's going to try throw an AT grenade, but you kind of. I doubt there. Still going deep for the AT grenade. T70 comes in. 
try and save the day. Oh man, he's just getting shot. Oh, just torn to shreds there. Osman just ripping in. 20 kills on the Osman, man. This thing is doing some dynamite damage. This machine gun. It's run into this like three times. Surely by now you you would have thought. Thought he would have learnt that this was here, but uh it is very, very hard to play this style of gameplay. I mean I have played Reserve Army many times. And it's uh, very hard to stay on track of all these different engagements. Very intensive very taxing. Oh, T I mean, this T-34 is probably going to go down here. Osman could probably even chase it down. Yeah, there we go. Oh, sounded like he died twice there. So yeah, I mean, he, that was just really bad. He just sat in front of that pack for ages. Still, he's got Max on the ropes. He's pushed way, way back. Training on the VPs. Maybe he's about to suffer a triple cap. No, he's going for the fuel instead. Perhaps a mistake. He doesn't need the fuel himself. And he's kind of strange to rely on getting that VP pressure going. Two kills. Oh, we have oh, kablammy! <laughs> Water just got wrecked. That's a real shame. That was a bit three more as well. He's coming in. He's coming in. Is he going to try to steal this while it's under railway artillery fire? This is risky stuff. You see that shell flying down? You can kind of see those shells flying in the shadow of them, which is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Artisans are ready. So yeah, he is bleeding like crazy from all these conscript squads. This is exactly what I was fearing. He's not merging them into his other squads. He's falling behind in terms of armor. It's not looking good if I'm honest. Now it seems like he's uh, maybe running out of micros. You know, we're 30 minutes in, it can be very tiring to play this style of game. So you can really start to tire once you hit that 30 minute mark or so. I've experienced this myself many times. Okay, but he's making pushes on many different fronts. See how this one goes. He's got to try to duke so many machine gun arcs. Very, very hard to do. Oh, could get this Austrian one on retreat. There he goes. There we go. Nice pickup. Looks like this this gun's going to get cleared by the machine guns. Makes him ripping in. Yep, there it goes. So it's coming down here. Awesome. Pioneers squad away. Oh, it's this gun destroyed there by the pack. Good play by Max. Max himself floating a lot of manpower right now. If he just, you know, got two, got another squad of Pegrins maybe, and uh, another tank, I feel like he could win this game quite easily. Okay, we've got an SU 85 coming up from Macos. Decent choice. When you get the SU-85, you're in it for the long game, really. Not that good until it gets to Vets 2. 
This is when it starts to get crazy virulency and uh, really come alive. So, kind of playing the long game with the S385, just go deal with a few few engagements of it being pretty rubbish before it hits vet, vet 2 and then it really comes alive. It's also being addressed in that uh, bounce preview mod, giving it uh, more penetration and accuracy and a lower rate of fire. So it's less of an RNG cannon. At the moment, you know, it can come good if all your shots penetrate and hit, but if they all miss and fail to penetrate, you can do absolutely nothing. Okay, so here we go. He does have a VET 3 T70, so he's done a really good job keeping this alive. And uh, can you use recon mode on that? And that can actually be really useful. Teaming up with your SU85, don't have to use the focus sight on it, so it's more maneuverable. I wonder if we'll see that from Makos. There's some good synergy going on there. SU85, though, having a lot of trouble shooting uphill right now. Also, I don't think he's on prioritized vehicles, so maybe he's shooting infantry. There he goes. Connects with the Panzer IV, but now he's getting blasted on by the pack. Pack could use target weak point here. SU-85 is going to get away. All these squads just getting ripped to shreds by the machine gun. Here comes the T-70 down the side. Once again, though, Flak Pants is still sitting here. Oh, this could be a dead... In fact, that's almost certainly going to be a dead T-70. Yep. Here we go. I suppose at that long range, rather hard for the pack to... I mean, it's, you know, somewhat unlikely that it's going to land on such a small target, this T-70, but can't rely on that. Always got to pop that uh, crew repair in those kind of situations, which I covered in my micro tips and tricks video. And there's no excuse not to, because it's got 462 munitions. Also, I should probably be still pumping out that rapid conscription, get all these guys PBSHs. Because, uh, why the hell not? Got that many munitions. Why oh, you should really be doing some stuff. Probably should also get some demo charges down on these flanks. Try to pick up some squads that way. Oops, bad camera right there. Okay, there we go. We've got rapid conscription coming in. Trying to replenish his forces. C-85 shooting at infantry. That is not the best idea. I mean, it's not going to do much damage. Very unlikely that it'll kill anything. And it's giving away your tank destroyer's positioning to your enemy. Very valuable sometimes to have, you know, it pop out of nowhere and surprise your enemy. So giving its position away to your enemy for no real gain to yourself. Do not recommend that at all. And uh, still, Max, he did get another squad P greens. If you've got another Panzer IV, he could go all in here very easily knock out Makos. The ball is in his court though. He can just sit back, let Makos, you know, run his squads in time and time again and win the uh, long game, the game of endurance. Oh, there we go, Pops merge. That was kind of risky, but there you go. Oh, I think that's going to die anyway. <laughs> oh, the death loop. The good old fashioned Max and death loop. You gotta love it. Oh, wow, you got a kill. There we go. I'm kind of surprised he's not moving his pack up. Just trying to put some damage out. There he goes. Got some pea greens. They're going to give sight to the pack. He pops tag weak point. This could be a dead. There he goes. He pops it. Stunned now. Here comes the Panzer IV. No, Panzer IV misses. Pack doesn't though. And there goes the 285. 
So that's what I was saying, you know, just shooting at infantry for no reason, giving your opponent the chance to know your exact positioning does not go well. Got a Kachushin now. Ooh. Quite a lot of damage on him, one model kill though. But it's going to buy him a bit of breathing room, which he desperately needs. Looks like he's going to get this kill here as well. Thanks to his PPSH cons. So losing the SUA5 was a bit of a blow, but he's still got enough fuel for another two. As long as he doesn't bleed too much manpower for no reason again. So he can actually afford another SUA5. That would be good. No, he's just going to keep charging and charging into the machine gun time and time again. And now, uh, wow, Max actually not going for another Panzer Fort. Ticked all the way up. He's going for a Panther. Well, that's one way to seal the deal. Panther very hard to deal with on this map. Probably need double SU-85s, honestly. And even then, it's a real tax on your micro to try and beat the Panther. As I was saying, you got to try and vet it up to vet 2 before it becomes useful, and that's when it can actually deal with the Panther. But before that point, the Panther can quite easily flank it and knock it out. Very hard to use. Oh, we now forget about using a T-34. As well. And look at that rate of fire now on the flat panzer, that's pretty impressive. Pretty rare that you see a flat panzer get uh, this highly vetted, as, well, I mean, the austere one at least. Pretty rare you see a flat panzer full stop, in fact, from austere. But it's uh, definitely paid for itself this game. You're doing great, and here he goes, about to get another kill. Maybe. Ooh, close call. I'm kind of surprised he didn't chase there. And you are more accurate when stationary, but there you go. Oh, this could be the end of it, though. Oh, no, SU 85. As I was saying, its accuracy is just awful. Oh my god. Ah, uh, see, this is. Oh my god, man. This is this is why these two, nobody goes Soviet tier four. Was that three or four shots all missed there? That's exactly what I was talking about. That's why it, I'm uh, eagerly anticipating the changes to it, making Soviet tier four viable. And what Soviet Tier 4 is viable, I mean, it does open up a lot more of these commanders that don't have those coolant tanks. Which uh, I personally enjoy using quite a lot. It's very fun to try and use these abilities like rapid conscription, constant repairs, PPSHs, howitzers. It does uh, open things up a lot more once Soviet Tier 4 is viable again. Okay, we have railway uh, artillery coming in. Not going to hit much, but if uh, squads retreat at the wrong time, could go wrong. Looks like, oh no, doesn't have to worry about that. Both the squads died. Oh, that could have been uh, a dead squad. But yeah, I may speed this one up now because this is over. I mean, he's got four conscripts, and that's it. Sort of fucking close to get one now. That's when it gains the ability tracking. Which is alright. Oh, another squad's gonna die. Yeah, I'm just gonna speed this one up. So, yeah, nice to see some unconventional play from uh, both teams. From both uh, teams of Social Castle 2 2 2s <laughs> Both players. But yeah, Makos kind of just just kept uh, throwing throwing infantry into the midst uh, very late on his tier three tech. 
Probably should have ticked tier 4 earlier, got that Katusha out to try and soften up that 4 machine gun team weapon play. And, uh, yeah, don't shoot at uh, stuff with your tank destroyer or your pack or your, you know, anti-tank gun. Same, uh, same principle. Give away, give away its position for almost no gain. And yeah, Max probably, you know, he was sitting around 80 for a long time with quite a lot of previous float. If he had... If he, you know, if he'd gone to 100 earlier, probably could have closed out the game a bit quicker. Honestly. He's going to use that to supply drop in some munitions. Maybe try and get another railway artillery strike coming in. Yeah, you can't really, you can't, I think he's kind of, you can't, you can't say cons are useless the way he was using them, just like running into four machine guns, you gotta think, I mean, machine guns are supposed to counter their exact kind of play, so, and yeah, he, he also got suicidal with his own machine guns, losing both of them to the enemy. And also just he, his preservation of conscripts in general wasn't that good. Anyway, guys, I'll wrap on that. If you'd like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.